So first thing we want to do in this problem is actually apply the formulas, right? Yeah. So I'm actually going to do it above because I want a little more space. So by applying the formulas here, I have sine of x, cosine of pi halves, um, plus cosine of x, sine of pi halves. Then I got to subtract, but again, here's where it becomes important. Use parentheses. I cannot tell you how many times students make a mistake when they see a problem like this. So I'm going to use parentheses, brackets, grouping, whatever. Now we just do sine of x minus pi halves. And again, as I already talked about with many of you, these are not the cofunction identities, right? Cofunction identities is pi halves minus x. No matter what you do with these, rearranging them, you're never going to get a positive pi halves minus x. So that's why we have to use our formulas. So by using the difference formula here, I get sine of x um, cosine of pi halves minus cosine of x sine of pi halves. OK. Any questions for what I did? I know it's a lot to write out. Yes, because you're not just sub you're subtracting this. See how it's one quantity here? But when I expand it, I created two different quantities. So you want to make sure you remember that you're subtracting not just this, but also that quantity. Yes, I know that part. But where is the, is the minus on the outside of the bracket? That's from the middle. That goes in. Yeah, that's from this. That, these are the same minus and symbols. So all I'm doing is I'm just saying, hey, just make sure you don't just subtract this and not that. You've got to subtract both of them. OK? I was wondering what you were doing with the top part, but I just rewrote the problem up top. I don't know why I wrote it so low. So now we, now we can go ahead and simplify. So we just need to know what the, what, pi halves? 0, 1. OK, so cosine of pi halves is just going to be 0, right? I'll write everything out. Sine of pi halves is going to be 1. Here, we can say that's going to be a sine of x times 0. Again, what I'm doing is distributing this negative. So then this becomes a positive cosine of x times 1 equals square root of 3. Now, obviously, you guys could simplify this a little bit quicker than what I'm doing. I'm just showing my work a lot. Hopefully, you guys recognize that we have a positive sign and negative sign. That goes to 0. So therefore, a cosine of x plus, and again, if you guys didn't, if you guys didn't use parentheses, and you got a negative, then you'd have 0 equals square root of 3. And you'd recognize there's no solution. Something was wrong, right? After you subtract. That's what I'm saying. You have to subtract the negative. That's why that's a positive, right? That's why we use parentheses, because you have to distribute that negative. So once you distribute the negative, it becomes negative. Positive. Now I can combine these. 2 cosine of x equals the square root of 3. And now it's just like last lesson. Divide by 2. Cosine of x equals the square root of 3 over 2. And then I believe I asked for find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So that's basically the unit circle. Right? So because we're very familiar with the unit circle, we could say our answer is going to be pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And then again, do these, are these equidistant from each other? Can we add an angle? No. So therefore, if I said find all the solutions, you would add 2 pi n to both of them. Yes? Uh, the signs cancel out. What do you mean they cancel out? That's a positive sign. That's a negative sign. Oh, okay. yeah. So it's like 5 minus 5. Yeah. So they just go to 0. So therefore, I'd write this as all solutions um, plus 2 pi n. And again, I could ask for both. I could ask for one, right? So just make sure you guys read the directions on that. Um, but, but anyways, guys, that's it. 